Hello, in this video, I am going to help you prepare so you can pass the security specialist super badge with confidence. Probably when you first looked at the super badge, if you're anything like me, you're like, oh my gosh, there is so much here. What am I gonna do with all this? In this video, I'm gonna take all of that information and break it down into simple documentation. I'll encourage you to do the same. By the time you're finished with this whole process, you're gonna feel like Inigo Montoya and the Princess Bride when he said, there will be confetti tonight. And you don't have to just take it from me. I've actually given this presentation to a couple of my followers and you can listen to them in their own words yeah it's really good one and uh, you, you mentioned all the use cases so all awesome going through this entire video from start to finish and following along and doing the steps in it will give you the confidence to earn the super badge you'll learn a tremendous amount about the security settings in salesforce which will give you more confidence when you actually get hired and doing this whole process will also give you an amazing story that you can include when you're looking for a job so you're able to get hired and we'll talk more about that in the course of this video I've provided bookmarks so you can jump back into one of the specific parts real easily. I don't recommend skipping any part of this video though because it's sequential. So skipping around will just end up making you a little bit confused. So please at least watch the whole thing from start to finish once. Of course, this super badge is a credential. So at no point do I give away how to actually do any of the requirements. If anybody does post a question looking for a specific answer or an answer to how to solve any part of this super badge. I'll delete your comment. You've been warned. Please comment. And remember, this is for posterity, so be honest. With that, let's get started. So we are going to talk about background documentation, what it is, why it's important, user stories, tasks, pre-work, and then we're going to actually go about creating user stories and tasks. The user stories and tasks are literally the magic that will make this enormous mountain of work seem manageable. Stay with me. Start off with background and documentation. Anytime you have a project, it's always important to share, you know, why are you doing the technical thing that you're doing? So you wanna share the backstory behind it. So that way, as this document gets handed around to other people, other leaders, other teams, they're able to look at it and be like, oh, that's what's going on. Cool, got it. That usually includes like the relevant conversations, the business case, like this is the business problem we're trying to solve. If there's any technical information about like the system that's being used that we need to know about and requirements, what needs to be achieved. The best way to break this all down is into user stories. So I want to talk a little bit about what user stories are, and then we'll go ahead and actually do that for this security specialist super badge. A user story gives context. And it says basically who's doing something, what are they doing and why are they doing it? So for example, I'm gonna give you a, an example that has no context. I'd like to eat dinner. Or like my kids come home and they're like, I want food. I can't do anything much with that. But if I say as an athlete, I want to eat dinner so that I am prepared for my marathon tomorrow, then I know what to make for that person's dinner right? It's got to maybe be high in carbohydrates and protein and be able to do all the things that's necessary so they are able to achieve and perform their best the next day. Similar type of a story. As a sports fan, I want to have a meal with my friends so that I can enjoy watching the game, right? So that's going to be a very different type of a meal. User stories should be standalone, so it should be clear enough to anybody who reads it they should include acceptance criteria, meaning define how we know when the user story is completed. Not necessarily saying like what needs to be made in the meal, but what's the outcome that should be achieved. In the case of the athlete, that would be they have the caloric and nutrient requirements to be able to participate in the race. In the case of the sports fans, that's going to be something different. It should focus on the intent, not the solution. User stories should be small also, particularly when you're starting. If you make them smaller, they're easier to estimate how much work is included in them. There's a really great module on Trailhead, which I recommend that you check out. It's called user story creation. Tasks make up user stories. So one user story can include many tasks in it. Tasks should be able to be something that could be completed in one day. Again, the more specific we get with the tasks, the easier it is to actually do it. The more better you get at doing something, the more general you can be with your tasks. They define what needs to happen to complete a user story. That could be meetings. That could be actually you know writing code or doing something inside of Salesforce. That could be having a review with your manager or with your peer. Whatever is 
necessary for the project to be finished should be a task. And it's also nice to include supporting docs. So that way, as you're going through the tasks, if you ever get stuck and you're like, hmm, I don't know what to do, you're able to look at the supporting docs. By the way, in the Security Specialist Super Badge, there's this note here that says, review security specialist trailhead challenge help there's a lot of great documentation there that you should totally check out and i pulled a lot of that documentation into this presentation user stories and tasks are necessary for this i think for this super badge because they will help you achieve this super badge with confidence you will understand it won't feel like some huge long list of things to do that's amorphous and hard to get your hands around but very clear why you're doing each thing and will really help you be able to feel a sense of accomplishment as you're going through the super badge. Also, if you do this, this is gonna make a great story for your blog. I recommend that you create your own presentation here or whether it's a presentation or Google Slides or Google Doc, whatever, whatever it is you do, create your own documentation and then include that in your professional blog because when you go to get hired, you're gonna have your Salesforce administrator certification, which is awesome. But everybody who's applying for the job is probably also gonna have the same certification. So that you're not gonna really stand out from the crowd. By including this type of work into your professional blog and saying, hey, this is what I did to help myself work through this security specialist super badge will make you stand out as a candidate, as somebody who understands how to do work, how work happens in business, how technical requirements have to relate to business needs in a way that will really make you uh, your, the standout candidate and should hopefully help you get to land that position that you're looking for. And then also, you know, it's going to just give you a lot more confidence when you're working, which is invaluable. Before you get started, I recommend you got to install the package that the mentions in Trailhead and also get physically comfortable. Get the drink that you like best, get a little snack, make sure you've, you know, rested, your phone's off, your room's quiet, and you're able to focus and get your work done. This is something that when you're doing lots of mental work, people it's like oftentimes underrate this, but really to be able to set aside hours of time to be able to do creative work is really essential so you can get your brain deep into that creative space and then get the project done. All right, you might have looked at this and been like, wow, this is a complicated use case. What is all that's going on over here? One of the things that I like to do is take the use case Take whatever it is I'm doing and try to just boil it down to a sentence. And here really all we're doing is we're updating Gen Z's security to meet old guards requirements. That's it. And being able to say something in a sentence is really important. So like when you're talking to your boss or other people, you're able to quickly say what you're doing and the business relevance that it has. Okay, the Gen Z standard objects, this is all part of just the background information. I'm just taking directly from the super badge and uh, you know, adding it in here in a little bit different format so it's a little bit easier to read. Pause the video at any time to look at one slide for longer if you need. The organizational overview is really important because you actually have to build this out, right? So keep this handy. Now, I'm never gonna tell you how to do something, but uh, obviously you're gonna have to make this happen. The other thing to keep in mind is that you only have a certain number of user licenses, and so you're gonna have to be going through this and activating and deactivating users in order to be able to complete some of these activities. So just keep that in the back of your mind. General record security requirements. Again, this is background information. I'm really just taking straight from here and just trying to organize it in a bit of a more usable way. The field sales user requirement. One of the things that they did over here is they gave you all of the information in just one big paragraph without any structure around it. So it's very difficult to tell what's the difference between the field sales user, the inside sales user, the sales executive user, and the project manager. What I did here is I broke it out so it's consistent. So I could see the accounts, opportunities, reports and dashboards, lists, and then when I go into the next one, I could see what's different between them, simple. And by documenting the requirements in this way allows me to appreciate what's unique about each user. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through these. Here's the field sales user requirements, the inside sale user requirements. I'm just documenting requirements now. These are not user stories. The sales executive user requirements and the requirements for project managers. Okay, one thing to keep in mind, and you've probably noticed this by now because you've done enough 
challenges. The naming convention is the key thing that the, the trailhead looks for. So anytime you're doing something with project managers, when it says use that name, use that name. Don't get creative, don't put in PMs or people who tell other people to do stuff or anything like that. Just use project manager so it's consistent. And now we get to our first user story, all right? And this is to get set up. So what I have here is this user story. As a, a Gen Z admin, I want to create the users in my organization so that I can test different configurations and meet old guards requirements. This is my first user study, get set up. And then I have my tasks that go along with this. And mind you, I'm not telling you how to do this. I'm not telling you if this is with permissions, roles, sharing rules, public groups, permission sets, and putting this information in here for you. And you've got to think about how you're going to want to do it. Okay. And now the field sales user, we'll talk about this guy a little bit. As a field sales user, I want to have access to accounts, opportunities, and reports and dashboards so that I can do my job without having more access than needed. So what I've done here is I've taken all of the requirements that are necessary for the field sales user, and I've put them all around this one person. Because really what we're trying to do here is help this one person, this type of person, be successful. And they need the access so they could do their job, but they don't want more access than necessary because that exposes them to risk, that they might find out information that they shouldn't know, and then they're gonna end up sharing it and there's gonna be a security breach and it will be their fault. So by us creating this tight security, we're actually benefiting this person. And then I included the tasks that are associated with this. And again, I'm not telling you how or where to do this. So don't don't read through this and think I'm like, like hinting with the words. I've mostly just copy and pasted directly from the challenge, right? So it's just, it's really just all right there. And I included acceptance criteria when they have the work, that, that stuff they need to know, and then the documentation as well. The inside sales user, it's very, very similar. The only thing that I added in here is to clone field sales. And that's not much of a hint because I'm not telling you what you're cloning. But the best way to do anything, and this is why it was so helpful to have our requirements broken up this way, is to start with one thing, recognize what's different, and then clone it and then just make those differences. So that way it's a much more straightforward process instead of starting from scratch each time. Okay, and then the sales executive user. Again, I recommended here to clone field sales. You could do this however you want, and I'm not telling you any other information about how you need to configure this person. Program managers, the user story. As a program manager, I want to access opportunities that need my attention so that I can do the implementations for each customer. Program managers do not need to know about every opportunity. They only need to mean about the ones that are relevant to them. This is the same information on the tasks that was actually included in the challenge. And just, you know, and I just sort of reorganized it in a way so it's a little bit more straightforward. But for you, think about how you're going to want to make this happen. And when you write out your tasks, you could write out where and how you're actually going to achieve this and what tools, what security tools you're going to use to achieve this outcome. Next, we're going to set record level security settings. Some of this you might have done earlier, but I'm going to have two user stories here. As an admin, I want to restrict access to opportunities so they're viewable only to people who own them and their managers. And as an admin, I want to allow access to accounts so they're viewable to anyone who has access to accounts. This is, you know, the admin is setting up all of the different people within the organization. So there I didn't have a specific user in mind. I could have said employees, but you know, I, I think just sticking it to the admin is fine. And again, these are just all of the same tasks that are included in the challenge, just broken out and conceptualized a little bit differently, not telling you how to do it. You should write in how to do it. I'm a broken record here. When it comes to running Apex texts, you have to pass both of them. If it fails, I could show you this, that uh, to click on view test history, then click view, and you'll see the text test that failed. From there, you'll see the error message. Can't tell you how to resolve this. Just think through all of the possibilities that could potentially solve the problem. Make a list of them. And you know, if you can't figure it out, just try each of them. Set appropriate password policies. This is really straightforward. I don't recall this being so much in the prerequisites, but you could always just you know look this information up as well. Track field level changes. Let's say here as an admin, I want to keep track of changes in the org so that I'm able to quickly react to any security threats. So like, I need to know what's going on. The other use case for this would be, so if something happens, I could go back and fix it. 
that might be better than a security threat. You could figure out the way that you want to write this. and Maybe I should revise that one. The tasks here are going to be to review and update settings to ensure that you're tracking changes to fields. If you don't remember how to do this, check out this unit on Trailhead. Set report dashboard and public list view security settings. I think you probably already did this earlier because we, again, we focused around doing this for each user. But now you're just going to be confirming that the profiles are set up completely. The user story I wrote for this was, as a user, I want to view appropriate data so that my organization is secure and I can do my job. And I just need those list views so I can get my stuff done, but I don't want to view more than, than that. Set up multi-factor authentication. I put this as an admin, the benefit for the admin. You could also say it's a benefit for a user, right? So I'll run it both ways here. As an admin, I want to require my users to use MFA so that we can have the highest standard of security. So here the admin is protecting himself to making sure that his users aren't sharing data. Or you could say this as the benefit is for the user that the user is not exposing the company data. You know, sort of two ways of thinking about doing that and, bo and both get to the same outcome. Um, as you're going through this, the requirement says to assign MFA to Samantha Cordero. Of course, Samantha has to be an active user. Track changes to Salesforce settings. I wrote here for the user's story as an admin. I want to keep track of changes to Salesforce settings so that we can have the highest standard of security. And then the documentation here is super helpful. Um, monitor setup changes with Setup Audit Trail. So now that you've watched this whole video, what I want you to do is grab a Google Slides presentation, some document, and just you know break up all of the different requirements just like we did into user stories, tasks, and document everything out and think about what your plan is gonna to be to how you can meet this Super Badges requirements. And then go through and make it happen. And you've got this. I wish you nothing but a lot of success. Thanks so much for watching. I really feel very privileged that I get to be a little part of your journey in learning Salesforce. Thanks for watching. You know, it's very strange. I have been in the Super business bad. so long. Now that it's over, I don't know what to do with the rest of my life. Have you ever considered admin certification? Make a wonderful Salesforce administrator.